Hey fellow music fans, welcome back to Psychology of Rock where we take deep dives into the philosophy and psychology behind the songs and artists that rocked the world. My name is Nina and today we're going to be doing a personality analysis of Peter Steele who was best known as being the frontman of the gothic metal band Type O Negative. I'm going to try to be as objective as possible but I'm not going to lie, I am a huge fan. In fact, Type O Negative is a band that I got to see live on many, many occasions and their album October Rust is one of my favorite albums of all time. In fact, I'm going to be doing a full analysis of that album on the channel in the near future, so definitely check back for that. But what we can gain from assessing someone's personality is a better picture of who they were as a person. It can help us to understand how they saw the world, which helps us to appreciate their art more because we understand where they are coming from. And I can tell you that Peter was an incredibly interesting person that was also fascinating to analyze. So today's video is going to be in three parts. I'm going to start with a brief biography of Peter and his work. Then I'm going to move on to discuss the characteristics and traits that I was able to identify by re-watching his interviews, by listening to his music, and by seeing him perform live. And finally, I'm going to speculate about his likely personality profile behind his gothic rock persona. I would love to hear at the end if you agree with my analysis, so don't forget to leave your thoughts in the comments section below. Just a reminder that the analysis Analysis is purely speculative and based solely on my own opinion. Also, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. And that being said, let's go ahead and dive right in. So Peter was born in 1962 in Brooklyn, New York, and was the creator of the metal band Fallout and the thrash band Carnivore before becoming the bassist, lead singer, and composer of the metal band or really gothic metal band Typo Negative, which formed in 1989. He was well known and even celebrated for his vampiric appearance. He stood at six foot seven, he had long black hair and green eyes, and he had a very distinct baritone voice. Not only was Typo Negative's music the perfect blend of being hard and heavy yet still melodic and catchy, but it was also unique in that it cleverly combined pandering and sarcasm with the kind of dark and somber imagery that we would commonly see in gothic or heavy metal music. Peter's lyrics ranged from being incredibly personal to completely satirical, sometimes even in the same song, and he often sang about themes such as love and romance and loss and heartbreak, hatred, religion, and even addiction. It was also clear that although the band gained quite a following that they never took themselves that seriously and they also stayed very true to their aesthetic which is something I think the fans really appreciated and was a huge part of what really drew people in. Peter used the color green as a running motif in his work which had symbolic significance to him. Not only was it his favorite color but it was also a reference to the green uniform he used to wear when he worked for many years in New York City's park and recreation department driving a big green garbage truck. He would often say in interviews that his time working there was the happiest time in his life. He was given the nickname The Green Man and he also used that as a song title on the album October Rust. Peter would cite the Beatles and Led Zeppelin as being his key musical influences and I think that's something that we can definitely hear in his music, especially in October Rust because we can really hear those kind of Beatles type harmonies. Now Typo Negative did release albums in both 1991 and 1992, but it wasn't until their landmark album Bloody Kisses came out in 1993 that they started to get recognition and commercial success. Apart from the band and his music, however, Peter really faced a lot of challenges in his life. He struggled with addiction and had a lot of personal loss. He also struggled with depression and spent time in both a psychiatric ward and a prison at different times in his life. So he had a lot of things going on behind the scenes. But it was actually his mother's death in 2005 that he said was the biggest tragedy of his life that affected him the most deeply. 
But despite all of this adversity, at the end of his life, he was really starting to turn a corner. He was starting to really move forward again. He was enjoying life again, and he was finally clean and sober. In fact, he decided to reform his band Carnivore and was enjoying playing with them and was planning to release new albums with both of his bands that year when he tragically died in 2010. He was only 48 years old. I know I was completely devastated to hear the news and I think his fans from around the world are still mourning him. Something that really surprised fans, however, was that after his mother passed, he became religious. He considered himself to be a Roman Catholic, which seems completely at odds with his professional persona. However, he said he went through a midlife crisis and that his mother's death really made him contemplate his own mortality. He was able to move through the midlife Life crisis, but he said that he was worried that he was going to have to pay for all the bad things he had done in his life, so it really inspired his faith. And something that stood out to me when I went and rewatched his interviews was how incredibly complex he was as a person. I also get the sense that he did not give himself the credit that he really deserved. I don't think he really knew or understood how talented he really was. He also seemed to have this layer of self-loathing. And I do think that some of that was for show. I mean, he definitely led with his self-deprecating humor. But I also think, at least on some level, that he was believing these negative things that he was saying about himself. In addition, I think he was just a very humble person. He never came across as being arrogant or pompous, even at the height of his fame. And I also think that he was filled with contradictions, which makes me think that even until his dying day, that he was trying to figure himself out. But we do really see these disparities in his personality profile. So for example, he was surprisingly soft-spoken, yet he had a razor-sharp wit. He was also shy and suffered from stage fright, but was able to eagerly embrace his role as a frontman for many bands and even posed for Playgirl magazine. He was extremely private and introverted, yet he was able to be charismatic and friendly during interviews. He was also incredibly articulate and intelligent, yet we would see him making the same types of jokes that a 10 year old boy would make. I also think that clearly he tried to portray himself as being dark and bitter and aggressive, but I don't really think that was his true nature. I think if he was like that on some level, it was more a response to being rejected in relationships and from experiencing personal loss and not really knowing where he fit in in this world. I actually don't think that many people truly knew him on a personal level and a lot of his life really is a mystery. In fact, again, I think that he didn't even fully understand himself. It's also possible that being mysterious was intentional. It may have been a form of self-protection. He may have felt that if people really got to know who he was as a person, that they would not like him as much, which of course couldn't be further from the truth. He was actually incredibly likable. He was multifaceted and he had so much to offer. I also think it's likely he would have been happier and much more stable had he found a soulmate and been in a healthy, committed relationship where he felt that he could be in complete trust of his partner and experience being loved unconditionally. Peter genuinely adored women and grew up surrounded by women, yet never seemed to find a truly fulfilling relationship. And I think this may have contributed to his depression because he had a sense that he was alone in the world even though he was constantly being surrounded by his fans. Honestly, there really was a lot of heartbreak and turmoil in his life, and I think he tried to deal with that turmoil through his sense of humor, and also, unfortunately, through overindulging in areas of his life that he did find pleasurable. But the fact remains that he was a brilliant songwriter. He was a brilliant performer, and certainly he had one of the most incredible voices in the industry. And it's funny because on more than one occasion, I heard 
heard members of the band say, don't mistake our lack of talent for genius, but I actually think there truly was a layer of genius there. I think really Peter wrote music that holds up and certainly the whole world is still mourning his death. So as promised, I want to take all of these factors under consideration and offer a personality assessment of Peter using the MBTI or the Myers-Briggs type indicator, which is what I use for this channel only because more people are familiar with it. But I do want to mention that I normally use the five factor model and the five factor model includes a dimension that the MBTI does not, which is neuroticism. And I actually think that Peter would have scored quite high in this dimension. This is where we would see facets such as anger, anxiety, self-consciousness, vulnerability, and impulsiveness, which is all things that we can clearly see were part of his personality profile. And also something else that could be seen as a disadvantage in the NVTI is that we have to choose between two distinct personality dimensions, whereas on the five factor model, it's on a spectrum. And I think in Peter's case, he was towards the center in a lot of cases, making it a little more challenging to select the proper dimension that he belonged to. But despite all of these challenges, I still think that I was able to come up with the MBTI profile that best suits him. So in this assessment, we're looking at four personality functions. The first is introversion versus extroversion. And Peter was clearly an introvert because introverts are reserved, comfortable being alone, and prefer knowing only a few people well. I think that fits. The next is sensing versus intuition. And here I'm going to go with sensing because sensors gather information from their physical reality. They are pragmatic and they trust their experiences over symbols and words. But this is one of the areas that I think he was closer to the center in. And I also do see elements of intuition in his personality type as well. The next is thinking versus feeling. And again, I think he is more towards the center, but I do feel that he leans more strongly to the thinking side. Now thinkers tend to believe that the truth is more important than being tactful. They are logical, they are analytical, and they notice inconsistencies in situations. Again, we also see some of the feeling tendencies here as well, but I do think he was still more of a thinker. And lastly, we have judging versus perceiving. And I think he was definitely a perceiver because judges are more settled and organized and like to live life in a safe and predictable manner. Whereas perceivers like to stay open. They keep their plans to a minimum. They approach work as a mix of play and work, and they are open to new information. And also this dimension is tied to being open to experience, which I definitely feel that he was. So putting this all together, I believe Believe that Peter was an ISTP, meaning he was introverted, sensing, thinking, and perceiving. And again, it was a little challenging to come up with this because he did use a stage persona and he really did not share too much. However, I do feel that many aspects of this personality type are in strong alignment with Peter. So let's go ahead and look at the traits that are associated with an ISTP. ISTPs tend to have an individualistic mindset and pursue goals without needing much external connection. They engage in life with inquisitiveness and personal skill and can vary their approach as needed. They like to explore the world with both their hands and their eyes and are both curious and rational. They explore ideas through creating, trial and error, and also firsthand experience. They also have difficulty in predicting emotions and tend to explore relationships through their actions rather than through empathy. They can struggle with boundaries and guidelines and prefer the freedom to move about and live life in their own way. They are often unpredictable, easily bored, reserved, humorous, and sometimes can engage in risky behavior. They can also uniquely combine being spontaneous with being down to earth and are generally good natured. So I'm so curious to hear if you agree with this analysis and if not, which personality dimensions do you think would actually be the opposite? Please let me know in the comments below. But either way, I think it is such a beneficial and fascinating thing to analyze the artists we love because it does help us to understand the psychological lens through which they see the world. It's true that two people can have the exact same experience yet perceive it in a completely different way 
based on their own experiences and their personality type. And I know at least in my own case, it ends up making me an even bigger fan of the artist because I feel like I know them on that deeper level. It makes me feel a lot closer to them. So I hope it does the same for you. So I truly hope you enjoyed today's analysis. If you did, please like this video, share it, and also do become a subscriber if you aren't one already. I would love it if you stuck around and I will see you next week.